in the 1980s, 1990s, there was a commercial that some of you may remember. It was of this woman who had one of those days between the bus and the job and the baby and whatever else. She needed to get away. And so we saw her getting ready to take a bubble bath and she said, take me away, Calgon, or something like that. And that commercial ran for quite a while and I believe that one of the reasons that it is memorable is that I think many of us have those days. Days when we just wish we could find a way, a little bit of a time, a little place where we can just go to get away from it, to rest, to be replenished, to get ready to go back into the world to face the boss and the work and whatever else it is that can wear us out. We all need this place, this time. And it is interesting that in the Bible, the wilderness is such a place. We go all the way back to Moses, and we see that the wilderness was not just a place for us to get through the people of Israel leaving Egypt and going to the promised land, went through that wilderness for 40 years. But it was a place of formation. In that wilderness, they were turned and formed and made a people of God. And we see with Jesus, that the wilderness was a place that he also went after his baptism and before he started his formal ministry. There too, he kind of solidified who he was as savior, what his work would be all about. And even after he started his ministry walking those streets and healing and teaching, he would go and find that quiet place to be replenished, to pray. We need the wilderness. And it's very interesting that in our gospel reading today, we find John in the wilderness. Now, we don't really know why John started out in the wilderness as an adult, but he could have been there as a part of the community of Essenes, a religious Jewish sect who sort of set, you know, lived apart, very much like monks would um, in some um, religious um, communities. They were an austere, they lived an austere and a very strict life, and they had a lot of um, rites around ablutions, you know, the um, baptism which we see John also preaching. So it may have been that he was part of that community. But I think Luke wants us to understand the wilderness as a place apart. Because Luke starts the story that we just heard by naming the powers that be in the world that John lived in. The Caesar and the Pontius Pilate and um, the, the high priests. All those people who held positions of great authority who were really not um, so much about justice as about um, gaining self um, power and uh, money and um, they oppressed in many ways the people and John needed to get away to get away so that he could hear what God had to say he could know what God was preparing him for so that he could be formed to be the forerunner of Jesus. That was his call. We need to know that when we 
hear about the wilderness, that it is an experience that we too are invited to participate in. Advent, in many ways, is a time when we can live into the wilderness experience. It's a time when we can put apart some space in our lives to get to know God better, to draw closer, to be formed, to be ready to hear God's call, to open our hearts and our minds to God's call. There are many ways we can do it, but it's a very busy season that we're in. Advent is in the midst of the hustle and bustle of Christmas preparation. And sometimes we need just that little moment to have the bubble bath. We just need that little time. And so today I'm going to invite you on your way out to take an Advent calendar that um, was produced by the Episcopal Church. And on it are seven different practices that we can try each week, one per day. One little moment of wilderness opportunity. One moment when God can work on us and prepare us for what it is that we are getting ready for, for receiving Jesus, for the work of justice, the work of lowering those hills that are obstacles and raising those valleys so that everyone will be on level ground. And so on the Advent calendar, you will find that one of the practices is worship. <clears throat> Together as a community, we can make worship much richer by giving our attention to a particular thing. For example, last Sunday, the worship was to think about the part of the service that filled your heart. It could have been a song. It could have been a prayer. It could have been a neighbor who reached out to you. Something, just one thing to think about and then take into your week. Another part of another practice would be to pray. Something that Episcopalians are very good at when they have the Book of Common Prayer because that is full of very <coughs> rich prayers. But on the moment when someone tells you something or something is happening in your life and you want to pray about it, we don't have so much practice doing that, not so comfortable doing that. But perhaps this Advent, that's a way we can grow, where we can hear a friend say to us, you know, I'm having a little bit of a problem with my child, and you can say, I will pray for you right now. And to just have conversation with God about that child. Another practice is to turn. Something in your life that's not flowing with the way God wants you to go. And maybe you need to turn around 180 degrees and do something new. Also to learn, to use scripture as a way of knowing God better. A lot of times we hear God's stories, the stories from the Bible. We go back as if it's a historical document that's just interesting things. But God's word is living and it is for us today. So how do we reflect on scripture so that we can say, how does it affect my life? my community, my world, right now. The other one is to bless. How can we be a blessing for each other? And the seventh one is to go. At the end of every service, we are sent out into the world. And so the Advent calendar will give you something to take out into the world, something to do when you are in the world, to think about, to act on. My prayer for all of us this Advent, as we make our way towards 
preparing for the Christ, the birth of the Christ child, for celebrating the great Christmas feast, is that we, like John, see the wilderness, see this Advent time as a time when we can be formed and grow in our relationship with God and with, with each other. And may we just take that moment each day to have that deep, deeper understanding of who God is and what God is calling each of us to do and to be. Amen. Amen. Amen.